What's going on everybody? I've been spending a lot of time lately just kind of watching things that I want to watch. Picking up on some older films and watching some films that I've been recommended because beginning of the year is always rough when it comes to new releases. Every now and again you get something pretty decent that drops. I wanted to talk about a film that was so just jaw-droppingly weird and insane that I felt like I needed to do a video on it. And that is a film by Takashi Mike called The Happiness of the Katakuris. The Katakuri family has just opened their guest house in the mountains. Unfortunately, their first guest commits suicide and in order to avoid trouble, they decide to bury him in the backyard. Things get way more complicated when their second guest, a famous sumo wrestler, dies while having sex with his underage girlfriend and the grave behind the house starts to fill up more and more. I knew absolutely nothing about this movie when I went into watching it, and I think that was for the best. All I knew was about Takashi Mike. I had recently watched his film Audition, which I really enjoyed. It's a much more straightforward horror drama. It's very slow paced, very methodical, but I enjoyed it. Reveal in the third act was really great. It's a very violent film. It also looks at some interesting subject matter. And so seeing that he was in charge of this film, I expected something along those lines. I did not expect a horror comedy musical with a dance number filled with zombie people. I'm really glad that that's what this movie was. A difficult one to discuss without being spoiler filled. So this whole video is gonna have spoilers about the movie if you wanna go in and watch it blind. I don't think knowing about it would take away from it other than the movie is very shocking. I'm gonna get into it now. The opening of this film is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. It has absolutely nothing to do with the remainder of the film, but it has this woman who goes into a restaurant and she sits down to eat and something in her food pulls her uvula <laughs> out of her mouth and then it turns into this like claymation surrealist art piece where this bird takes the uvula to the family's farmhouse and it is just the most wild way to open a film that I've ever seen. I actually watched this around the same time as re-watching the movie House, which is a very over-the-top surrealist horror film from Japan, and the Asian culture is filled with these incredibly talented filmmakers who make these movies that, to me, push the envelope as to what cinema can be. And I love that about, especially Happiness of the Katakuris, where Takashi Mike takes every conventional trope that exists in horror and comedy and just kind of turns it on its head where you watch this film and you're thinking to yourself, like, what American filmmaker would be able to go to a production company and get the money to create this type of a movie? Because... What's really impressive is the production value in this. Some of it's like over the top hokey, like the way the zombies look when they're doing their dance numbers. For the most part, the attention to detail in the filmmaking and just like the over the top nature of it. There's a scene, each one of the family members in this, there's a, uh, a grandfather, a uh, mother and father, and their son and daughter, and then the youngest girl who probably at the time is like five or six years old and the film is being told through her perspective where she's talking about her mother and her uncle and her grandparents and her great-grandfather and each one of these characters has these like very eccentric personalities that are wonderful but there's this scene in the film where the grandma and grandpa have this like love song that they sing to each other and like karaoke bars come up at the bottom of the screen and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? But it, it's in the best way possible. And what makes the film move along so well and what makes you enjoy that over the top experience is just how likable this whole family is. They all have their flaws. They all have issues to their character. That's what makes them so lovable. And I, I really love this grandfather who has put all of his time and effort with his wife into opening this this like bed and breakfast essentially at their house because they try to build it near this highway that's supposed to be constructed, but it's never 
constructed. And so they're just hoping that people stumble upon it so they could stay with them and they can't get anyone. And then as the description of the film says, everyone who comes and stays with them ends up killing themselves for some reason. And it makes no sense and it's really ridiculous, but because of how likable these characters are, it makes it so funny. And then the youngest girl who's narrating the film her mother is constantly wanting to seek love and be in a relationship and her daughter kind of scrutinizes her for it in the uh, narration of the film. The guy that she becomes infatuated with says that he's related to the Queen of England and that he's been in the military and he's just manipulating her. And it, it's really funny and it's over the top and it doesn't make any sense. But there's all these little tiny elements added into the film that just make it so so entertaining and engaging when the family decides they just want to start dumping bodies because they're like we don't want this bad press of like hey we just opened and somebody's already died it's just uh, it's so over the top and ridiculous it's really hard to talk about it in a way that does it enough justice but that over the top and comedic nature of the film is what makes it so engaging if i had any qualms with the film I would say the runtime is a little bloated. It, there's a couple moments where it just doesn't feel like the pacing works in the film's favor, where it could spend more time dwelling on these over-the-top moments or these musical numbers that are are so well-crafted. There's moments of just meaningless exposition that I feel like could have been chopped out and spent more time focusing on the characters or caring about their plot arcs. But I don't think that takes away from the overall experience of the film and it's definitely one that I would recommend that you check out. So have you seen The Happiness of the Katakuris? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I think this movie is ridiculously over the top and hilarious, and I think you should definitely watch it. As always, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content that you're looking for. I'm trying to release a couple videos a week. I've been really enjoying getting that material out there for you. As always, everybody, thanks so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.